help support AMTV by becoming a patron, an AMTV staff member, and following us over on Twitter. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here, and today we're going to be talking about Deal or No Deal. That's right, the famous game show that pretty much ruled Channel 4's sort of daytime, tea time quiz show slot in the 2000s and most of the 2010s. But would you believe it or not, after nearly seven years of being off the air, Deal or No Deal is back. I first saw this news over on Twitter from the TV Zone Twitter account. I've said it before, but definitely give them a follow. They are really up to date with like the latest news about the TV world, what's, what's being commissioned, what's being cancelled, and a whole lot more. And it says, Deal or No Deal is back. ITV have officially announced the iconic series will return with new host, Stephen Mulhern. But it does say uh, in a subtweet below it that ITV has not confirmed whether the reboot is for daytime or prime time. So that's a very interesting concept. But let's actually get into the article itself again. This is on uh, TV Zone's website here. So it says it's back uh, in a brand new setting with a brand new with brand new prize boxes and a new batch of contestants hoping to win a whopping cash prize. But who will have what it takes to beat our brand new banker? So. I'm guessing you guys, are, or a lot of you at least, are very familiar with the concept of Deal or No Deal. Again, it was on the UK screens at least for 11 years, from 2005 to 2016. It was on Channel 4. It was hosted by Noel Edmonds, who of course is one of the most iconic presenters in UK TV, certainly over the last half century. We'll talk more about him a little bit later, but it was pretty big. It made nearly, you know, over 3,000 episodes during its run. It was a really big hit for Channel 4. It came from the Netherlands originally, actually. But anyway, let's just talk about this reboot for a second. It says, with new host Stephen Mulhern, the series will be produced by Remarkable Entertainment, a Banny J UK company, and see contestants battle it out against the notorious banker to be in with a chance of winning a life-changing cash prize in a nail-biting game of nerves and intuition. Basically just keeps explaining like what the premise of the game was so that might be useful for anyone who doesn't know or has forgotten as again it has been nearly seven years since the show's been on here in the uk from Stephen Mulhern himself he had this to say wow what an opportunity i'm beyond excited to be hosting the brand new series i've always been such a fan of the show so much so i've been practicing at home with small cereal boxes it looks so simple but it's an incredibly compelling game for both those playing and the viewers watching at home it's one of the greatest shows of all time, and to be the new host is an honour. I can't wait to get started. That's that's quite a claim, Stephen. One of the greatest shows of all time. Uh, I mean, let me know down in the comments. Would you say Deal or No Deal is one of the greatest shows of all time? Great, One of the greatest game shows of all time? You know, maybe there's... Some would maybe lay claim to that, but one of the greatest shows of all time, that's just... I'm not trying to knock it, but you know, that that is a that is a big statement. Though I suppose it is all it is all subjective, isn't it? So Stephen Mulhern as a host, I'm sure a lot of you again in the UK will be familiar with him. He's been working in the television business since the late 90s. Some might remember him as one of the presenters on CITV, which he did uh, between 1998 and 2002. I was never really a CITV kid, but I know a lot of you guys watching were, so maybe you might remember him from that. He was also on SMTV Live for a bit in 2003. He was the host of Britain's Got More Talent, a sort of companion show to that series from its inception in 2007 all the way up until 2019. So again, maybe a lot of people became aware of him from that. Celebrity Juicy was on for a couple of years as well. Yeah, a lot of recognisable shows. I think where I first sort of became aware of Stephen Mulhern is from him hosting Catchphrase, which of course itself is a reboot of another iconic series. That reboot kicked off in 2013 and indeed is still, well, it hasn't been cancelled 2013 to present, it says here on Wikipedia. So that's where I've sort of become familiar with Stephen Mulhern and I like his personality. You know, he's relatively inoffensive, very cheery, very upbeat. The, the sort of ideal host you want for shows like Catchphrase and I guess like Deal or No Deal as well. The joint managing director for Remarkable Entertainment, which is Tamara Gilder, said, We're thrilled to be bringing Deal or No Deal back. It's an iconic format, but now on a new channel with a new fantastic host. We also have a new banker, but I'm afraid they're even more awful than the last one. That just, it's funny that because as far as I remember in Deal or No Deal, you never actually saw the banker. It was just the host talking to them on the phone. So I guess that's just a bit of, you know, that's just a bit of marketing talk there, you know, trying to say, oh, the banker's worse. It's going to be a lot more difficult, etc. But, you know, you expect these sort of things in press releases like this. The head of entertainment commissioning at ITV, which is at Katie Rawcliffe, they added, Deal or No Deal is such an iconic format, and we're delighted that it will be joining the ITV family. Stephen's infectious warmth and wit mixed with his natural rapport with members of the public is the perfect combination for this much-loved 
TV series. I do agree that as a host choice, you know, again, for Deal or No Deal, which, um, it, you know, you want someone in that vein of Noel Edmonds and uh, Stephen Mulhern. They have a very good relationship with the public. They're, they're very easy at, like, chatting with them. There's not a lot of awkwardness, not necessarily a lot of dead silence. There are silent moments in Deal or No Deal, but all, of course, intentional in that sense. So, yeah, I think he's a he's a pretty ideal choice for this. What I find interesting about Deal or No Deal coming back to IT is to ITV. It's not coming back to Channel 4. Now, I've talked about this a bit before, but in, in 2023 for the TV world, more and more production companies, and I've heard this from friends who work in various departments of the TV industry, companies or broadcasters are taking less risks at the minute because of the rising costs in energy and just, you know, rising costs in general. So with newer series, you know, they may be getting one series and if it doesn't do well or doesn't make an impact, instead of giving it, you know, say a second series to try and develop it, they're getting cancelled from the off. And this is happening all the time. I mean, even on um, TV Zone's website, it updates you with a lot of this stuff. For example, like just before just before this was announced, I saw that Celebrity Lingo, which is a bit hosted by RuPaul, that's not being renewed for a second season. So again, that's an example of a show that got one series and it's just, it, it's not happening at all. So yeah, it is a, <laughs> it's, a t it's a tough time in TV, basically. And we, we've already talked to, uh, as well about different cancelled shows, some of them old favourites, some of them more newer. So Deal or no, why is Deal or No Deal coming back? Well, like a lot of these reboots, you know, I guess a lot of it is hinged on the former popularity and the nostalgia. Again, the original show was on UK screens for over a decade. It, it sort of maintained its popularity for the most part, as far as I'm aware. I did watch, you know, the odd episode of the show. I never went out of my way to watch it. But when I did watch it, you know, I did find it entertaining. It was an interesting concept. So the fact that it is being revived doesn't surprise me necessarily. I thought maybe that would happen. Seven years again, maybe I, I would have expected a revival maybe sort of around the 10 year mark. But seven years, you know, for, for big fans of the show, I'm glad. I'm sure you're glad it's coming back. Just a little bit more of information is that it was first launched in 2002 in the Netherlands. It came over here three years later in 2005. It's been commissioned in over 80 territories worldwide with more than 350 productions. And casting's now open, so if you're interested, and that includes you guys watching, if you're interested in applying, you can do so at dealornodeal.co.uk. If you want to be a contestant, they haven't confirmed if the series is on daytime or prime time. We mentioned that before. From what I remember, and you might have to correct me, I think Deal or No Deal, when it was on Channel 4, wasn't it in like the mid to late afternoon, sort of like 3 p.m., 4 p.m.? Or was it on a bit, was it sort of like that weakest link time, like 5.15, 5.30? I don't remember it being a prime time show. Again, I could be wrong on that, but I don't remember it being prime time. I think with the format, as, as it, you know, as popular as it is, a prime time slot, say at 7 or 8 p.m. for an hour on ITV, I, I, I just, my gut's saying that's not the right time slot to put it in. I think maybe what it had before, sort of that mid to late afternoon slot or the tea time slot, you know, like what Pointless occupies on, on the BBC or the chase on ITV. But again, the ITV already has the chase, so it's probably not going to go there. But yeah, I just, I don't know, my gut's saying a deal or no deal in a prime time slot, sort of like 7 p.m. onwards. My gut's just saying that's not the time for it. But again, let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. But I think when a lot of people were talking about a Deal or No Deal reboot, one big question, at least for a long time, was is Noel Edmonds, the former host, you know, is he going to come back to host it some more? Because again, he 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 hosted it for the vast majority of its run, or pretty much all of it. You know, he he did that for 11 years. That's one of the biggest sort of stints of his uh, of his career, and he's hosted a lot of shows. Just as a reference, he's uh, he's 74 years old currently, and I've got to say, he's looking pretty good on it for 74, wouldn't you agree? But I mean, yeah, over the last 50 years, he's been he's been on the telly and stuff like that, and it, he's just that name. Uh, most people of, of of many ages and for different reasons know that name. It is interesting to remind people as well that the show, uh, well, again, according to this Wikipedia article, but there is a link to it, so you'd like to think it's true. Uh, Channel 4 and Noel Edmonds mutually agreed to end the show in the summer of 2016. And if that's true, again, you know, that's, uh, you know, you'd hope that that was uh, because, you know, I mean, after doing the same show for 10 years, as fun as it is, maybe he wanted to do something different. Noel Edmonds in his life was either going through a lot um, with um, trying to settle with Lloyd's Bank. That's a whole nother story in itself. And he was going down his own path as well. Not one that necessarily angered a lot of people based on what he said. So maybe that played into it as well. I'm not quite sure, but... Yeah, it was uh, it was probably the time to end it. 
I mean, out of all of his resume, I mean, just looking here, he did, uh, he hosted 76 episodes of Top of the Pops across a span of a decade. I think the first main thing that a lot of people really knew him for on the telly, at least, was probably the Multicolored Swap Shop, which he, he was on from 1976 to 1982. So, you know, really long time there. He did Top Gear as well. He appeared in 26 episodes of that. Telly Addicts, which was a format, I believe he either created or owned the rights to that was on from 1985 to 1998 that was really popular the uh the uh, late late breakfast show when that was on again that was 1982 to 86 obviously ended in really controversial and sad circumstances but that that was big in its four years on the air what else did he do that honestly there's there's loads guys there's really loads Noel's house party that was on from 1991 to 1999 and certainly during the you know, i'd say that you know three quarters of its time on the air that was the saturday night show that people tuned into it was a big big success obviously gave the world mr blobby for better or worse so you know if you're uh if you're scared of mr blobby or he feels nightmares <laughs> i really do apologize and then obviously in the new millennium he had deal or no deal which he did for over a decade as we said are you smarter than a 10 year old stuff like that he did other things towards the end of the decade you know he was on i'm a celebrity get me out of here in 2018 he appeared in ant and dex saturday night takeaway in 2021 so yeah he's he's been pretty consistent over the last 50 years in getting work he currently resides in new zealand he's very big into his spiritual stuff which again I'm I'm not knocking it. If spiritualism works for you, that's fantastic. But he's he's said and done some things over the years that have definitely rubbed people the long way. Again, I'm just looking on Wikipedia, and it's obviously mentioning about his uh, political views in one, including this line, which made me chuckle. Uh, Edmonds is an outspoken critic of immigration and the BBC's Welsh language service. That's just those are two very different things, and the fact that. They- <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way they've been put in the same sentence. I don't know. It just really made me chuckle. He's also apparently, well, he boycotted the TV licensing in early 2008. Although TV licensing, the company that manages it, claimed that he did possess a valid license. But then his spokespeople said that was wrong. So that's just, that just seems like a weird mess, if you ask me. Then it comes on to obviously about his spiritualism and how he's big into that. And again, that's completely that's completely valid if that works for you. It's like anything, I think, when, you know, if you believe in whether it's spiritualism, religion, whatever it is, if it works for you, that's fantastic. And being able to tell people how it's worked for you is also a completely valid thing. I just think when it gets really pushy, when it's like you're, you, you're trying too hard to push your beliefs onto other people that they should adopt it, that's where it goes too far for me. But this was the big thing, I remember. This was in 2016, so... And again, it says in June, so maybe this did influence him ending Deal or No Deal, I'm not sure. It was the EMP pad. So he basically said on Twitter that an electromagnetic pulse device in the, you know, in the form of like a a mat or a pad, um, it cost over two grand, but he said it's a simple box. It slows aging, reduces pain, lifts depression and stress and tackles cancer. Now, I think out of all of those claims, that was the big one. And, uh, it, you know, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people with cancer, in fact, commented basically saying this was nonsense and it was making a mockery, uh, etc. Um, he, he stoked the fire, really. Apparently, he responded to a guy who had kidney cancer and a bunch of other stuff um, saying scientific fact disease is caused by negative energy. Is it possible your ill health is caused by your negative attitude? Hashtag explore. Oh, Jesus. Now, again, we all have our opinions, but I just think this came across, especially on the medium of Twitter, this came across extremely insensitive. And in fact, he went on this morning, ITV's main uh, morning show with uh, Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby. And, uh, you know, he, he states that he had been diagnosed himself with prostate cancer in November 2013. Obviously, a very stressful, very negative period in life. That is, you know, completely understandable. So, yeah, he basically explained to them that it was down to, uh, you know, negative energy, but then he had his tumor destroyed by sound waves, proving yet again energy is at the heart of the issue. I mean, I mean, technically, yes, sound waves is energy, but uh, I believe pulsed electromagnetism has a role to play in tackling cancer, and I will always believe that. Again, you can understand why this ruffled a lot of feathers. And his, I mean, his his argument was pretty much shattered when the company that made the device, EMP Pad Limited, basically said, we, we don't agree with this claim about tackling cancer in any way, shape or form. So that basically shattered that. And, you know, he basically got a lot of criticism from various professors or doctors whose speciality was into different cancers and stuff like that. So, and I think from then, 
it was really, you know, where you, you saw Noel Edmonds less and less on TV. As I mentioned, he did appear in things like I'm a Celebrity and all that sort of stuff, but he wasn't as prominent as he once had been. And you might have seen from his clips, he was the kind of guy who, like, if he had a thought, he'd speak his mind, he was going to stick to it. He'd also gone through the stuff with Lloyd's Bank. Again, I'm not going to go massive into that here, but... It, it, he basically wanted a lot of money from them because there was this whole scam thing. Again, I won't do it justice by talking about it. There's various articles, videos and stuff you can check out on that. But that, I think, really did a number on him as well, uh, like mentally. I imagine that was really draining. I suppose if you want a more in-depth look, Channel 5 last year in 2022, they made a documentary called Noel Edmonds, The Rise and Fall of Mr. Saturday Night. It's 90 minutes, and at the time of recording, I haven't watched it just yet, but after I finish this, I'll probably get a start on it. But I imagine this might touch on, like, the Lloyds thing and the EMP pad and all that sort of stuff. At least I hope it would. So maybe check that out. That's on the Channel 5 streaming service, My5, and it's actually available until 2027. So, you know, you've got, <laughs> you've got a lot of time to catch up on it. I'm sorry, I went way off track on Noel Edmonds there, but I mean, he's an interesting character in himself, but I thought it was interesting to talk about. But the main thing is, Deal or No Deal is coming back sometime in 2023. We don't have a release date at the time of recording. Some people are speculating it could be the summer or after the summer period, say September. But yes, it will be coming back on ITV, this time with Stephen Mulhern as host. The format sounds like it'll be roughly the same, or will it be tweaked? How will it look? How will it play? Will it be the same? Will it still be entertaining seven years after its original ending? We'll have to wait and see. But that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do leave a like on it. It really does help us out. And let me know your thoughts in the comments down below about deal or no deal and it coming back. Do you think this is too soon? This is the right time, etc. Let me know your thoughts down below. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. We would love to have you aboard. I've been Adam Martin from AMTV. Thank you for blobbing with me. And blobby, blobby, blobby. Thank you to our patrons for helping to support the show. And a special thank you to Macra, Hooks Media, Ben Freeman, Ethan Carberry Holt, Bruce Danton, Globe of Reviews, Derek Chambers, Sean Nock, Dord Khan, and Fabina UPC V2.0, our AMTV staff members.